Hello everyone, welcome to session A of LTech 654 Programming Games and Simulations. In this week's overview video, I want to talk about two things. First, Game Production Project 1, Postmodern Lemonade Stand, and then I want to talk a little bit about how I would approach programming a Lemonade Stand simulation. So let's get started. First up, thank you for forming your groups. We have seven groups all together. Six of the groups have four people, which is perfect. And then JP is in a group of his own, which works well because he actually is in a different time zone and had requested to work by himself anyway. So excellent. I have formally released the game production project one, and you can go ahead and look through that when you're ready. The purpose of this assignment is to give all of you the experience of designing and developing a single player turn-based simulation. The assignment is meant to highlight the complexities of game programming along with the interdisciplinary nature of putting together an educational game. Obviously for this assignment you need to program a version of the lemonade stand. I'm calling it postmodern. What do I mean by that? Well, it simply means that in your groups, you can program your sim simulation and be as creative as you want. Try to make it for modern times. You can sell anything. It doesn't have to be lemonade or even a beverage. The only requirement is that you stay true to the mechanics involved in a lemonade stand simulation. In a few minutes, we'll take a look at past students' projects. In your groups, I want to emphasize that there should be four roles and each person should have a role on the team. So the first role is the project manager. The project manager is responsible for coordinating the group and leading communication. This will include scheduling meetings, managing sh shared files and game resources, and just making sure that everything's on time and everyone is contributing equally. The next major role is the lead programmer. And this is the person that's going to lead the technical programming of the simulation. This person will decide on the overall approach to making the project work technically. And they can assign smaller coding tasks to group members so that everybody has a little bit of experience with programming. The third role is the lead graphic designer. This person is responsible for the overall look and feel of the game. What graphic style will be used? what graphic assets will be needed to create that graphic style. This person's responsible for coordinating button styles, fonts, and other graphic assets, as well as the overall color palette of the game experience. The fourth and final role is the lead writer and sound engineer. This person has two jobs, writing the text that will appear in the game, and this includes dialogue, the narrative, and things like instructions, button labels, and anything else involving text. The goal is to have a simulation that is consistent and polished in terms of tone and voice throughout the experience. The other part of this person's job is to focus on sound. Is there going to be background music? When does the background music play? What are the sound effects when certain items are purchased or certain things are sold? Audio adds a lot to a game and can really facilitate the sense of immersion in a simulated experience. And so the lead writer and sound engineer is working with both text and sound to bring those items together. All right, so the project itself is broken down into five deliverables, and I want to walk through each of those deliverables. And these deliverables will be due over the course of four weeks. So let's take a look at the first one. So the first one is to produce as a group a design document. That's going to be due on Monday the 17th. And I'm going to talk more specifically about that in just a minute. The second deliverable due on October 21st is to simply submit a project update. Now you only need to submit one project update as a group and your project manager will do that. The third deliverable is another project update. Again, the project update simply focuses on when have you been meeting and what successes and challenges are you experiencing as a group. The fourth deliverable is to hand in the final project, and I'll elaborate more on that later on in the semester, but that is going to be due in four weeks' time, so November 7th, which is a Monday, and that obviously is the output of your entire group. And I'll talk more specifically later on about what you need to hand in for that. 
And then finally, each of you, this is an individual assignment, will need to record a video reflection. And that will also be due on November 7th. All right, so let me talk a little bit about the first deliverable, which is the design document. The purpose of the design document is for you as a team to capture your group's early ideas for your postmodern lemonade stand. Here are some details. Your design document should be roughly three to five pages, double spaced, including figures. And you should use low fidelity sketches. They could be hand drawn or digital or just kind of placeholder graphics. And they should also include annotations and narrative to explain the design to someone outside of your group, such as me. And finally, your project manager submits your design document as Google Doc on behalf of your group. Now, importantly, in your design document, you need to address a number of questions. And I have those questions listed here. But these are the questions you should discuss as a group and then ultimately document. So for example, what is the objective of the simulation? What procedures or actions can the player take to achieve the objective? What are the rules? What are the resources? What's the conflict? So on and so forth. You should recognize these as being related to the formal and dramatic elements of games that we learned about earlier in the semester. All right, let's take a look at a few past students' projects. So this one was called Adventure in Gold, and you can see here it had kind of a, a, a storybook quality to it, and here's a screenshot of purchasing supplies, but players could purchase wonders, spells, and teas, and things like that, and mix and match those and go out and sell them in the world. So that was Adventure in Gold. Now here's another one called The Sanctuary. This was programmed during the beginning of COVID-19. And so this was kind of a unique take on it. Players had to stay home and survive for 30 days. At times they had to go to work to make money. And at other times they had to go to work to buy food and sanitary items. They also had to balance not going crazy by being isolated during the, the pandemic. And so players had to make choices about going to work, going to the store, or staying home. So that was kind of an interesting take. Here was a variation of the classic lemonade stand, but instead of selling lemonade, this person programmed a bubba tea stand. And so you can see on the right here, there were different, you could buy cups, teas, boba, sugar, and ice cubes, and combine all of those ingredients that had different levels of appeal to the target audience. And then the last one, Blue Sky, was inspired by the hit television show Breaking Bad. And so players, instead of selling lemonade, you can kind of guess what they were selling. Players could combine sugar, the blue stuff, and chili powder, and various combinations, and pick locations to go out and sell their product. So these are all examples of postmodern lemonade stands. In the last couple of minutes, what I want to do is simply talk about how I would approach breaking down and programming a lemonade stand. First off, in step one, I would decompose the lemonade stand example that we watched. I would break it into scenes. And so I would focus first on the welcome scene, which would show a game title. And this would probably come after some sort of title screen but the welcome screen gives you the introduction. It welcomes the player, it explains the objective and directions, establishes a mood or a setting, and plays some background music. Next up, we would have a setting scene. And what happens in the setting scene? Well, it simply, it allows the player to determine the length of the game. Now, some of the more advanced programming that some of you may be able to achieve, it might allow players to adjust the difficulty of the game, and it might allow players to adjust the music volume on the settings page. Next up, we would have some sort of purchasing scene. And in the purchasing scene, this displays important external information, such as the temperature outside and the weather forecast, whether it's gonna be sunny or rainy. It also tells the player what day it is. It is day one of seven, for example. It also displays the player's financial balance and shows current prices of ingredients, such as water or lemons. And importantly, it allows users to purchase those ingredients. 
An advanced feature that might happen on this scene is the prices might be fixed or they might be adjusted based on external factors. What's happening quote unquote outside in the world based on temperature or weather or whatever other factors you want to program into your simulation. Next up, we actually have the crafting scene. And in the crafting scene, this is where the player combines all of the resources that they have purchased in order to create new resources. And in this scene, we can see that it displays important external information, such as the temperature. It displays the player's current quantity of lemonade, allows players to make more lemonade, and tracks the current quantity of ingredients. Now, an advanced feature that might be added to this scene would be allowing players to alter the recipe, such as making it colder or making it sweeter, which might have a downstream impact on how much lemonade is actually being sold. Next up, we have the selling scene, and this is really in the lemonade stand was the only one that had intricate graphics, but this shows customers buying lemonade or not buying it and it tracks the player's supply of lemonade and it lasts a certain amount of time. It tracks the player's money and shows customers' reactions to the purchases. And it also displays past time passing by. And those last two bullets are a little bit more complicated. Next up, we have the reporting scene. And what does the reporting scene do? Well, it simply summarizes the sales data for that day. How many units were sold? How much money was made or lost? and it sends the player back to the purchasing scene or to the game over scene, depending on if there's any more days left in the simulation. More advanced features include displaying a satisfaction rating, how, how satisfied are your customers, and displaying a popularity rating, how popular is your quote unquote lemonade stand. And then ultimately there needs to be a game over scene. And this indicates obviously that the game has ended and it invites the player to play again. Now, a more advanced feature would be showing the overall accounting that happened over the course of multiple days. What was your total income? What was your total expenses? How much inventory did you liquidate? And then ultimately, what was your net profit or loss? So after decomposing Lemonade Stand into scenes, we could actually begin by building wireframes of these scenes. And what do I mean by wireframes? Well, just really basic mockups with placeholder graphics and buttons and text of all of the different scenes that you would need. And so you can see those scenes listed here. I have a, a welcome screen, a crafting scene, a game over scene, a game start scene, so on and so forth. You could name those anything you wanted. Next up would be programming the linear navigation from one scene to the next. So how does the player get from the welcome to the setting scene, from the setting scene to the purchasing scene, so on and so forth. Now importantly, the next step up would be to program the game's quote unquote rounds. And this is where the days of the simulation come into account. And so the first time the player goes through, they're gonna go from purchasing to crafting to selling to reporting. But then the game is going to check, are there more days le left in the, game, in the simulation? If the answer is yes, then we're going to send the player back to the purchasing scene. If the answer was no, then of course we would take them to the game over. So somehow your simulation has to keep track of how many rounds or how many days of play have occurred. And how might we do that? Well, let's take a look at this mock-up code. You can see here that I have a ready function that calls change scene. The change scene function simply runs, and at first it adds the game start scene. But it uses elif statements to check what the value of current scene currently is and may advance the player to the game start scene or the setting scene. But ultimately, elif current scene equals equals reporting, what we're going to check is if the current round is less than or equal to the total number of rounds. And if that is true, then we're going to go back to the purchasing scene. If that's not true, that means the player is out of rounds and so should be taken to the game over scene. 
So I hope that gives you a little bit of insight into how to decompose the lemonade stand. And obviously this complements your technical analyses that you did for this week's assignment. But I hope it gives you a little bit more grist for the mill as your groups begin to think about working on your projects. Okay, everyone, that's all for this video. Have a great week, and I'll see you in Canvas.